Hello and welcome to our Masterclass on Compliance Training and Practice the Right Concept for Success. I would like to welcome you all and um, start with a brief introduction of myself. I'm Lisa. I have been for working for Sponge now for over eight years. Um, I work as a key account manager, which means that I consult our customers on the right e-learning solution. I help them identify their um, e-learning needs and then set up a training strategy and a roadmap for their compliance e-learnings. Um, I'm hosting the session today alongside my colleague Sebastian, who I will hand over now to so that he can introduce himself as well. Yes, uh, welcome everybody. I'm Sebastian. I'm a project manager at Sponge. Um, I work in the company now for uh, over 20 years. And yeah, my role is to produce and implement the training solutions um, together with our clients. Um, yeah, oh, sorry. We do have a little bit of technical issues today because there's some problem with the screen sharing. So I hope I'm, I'm sharing my screen right now, but I'm not able to see it on the um, on the presentation screen. So in case there's like a, a little bit of a time lapse or then just let me know, Sebastian will pay attention, but please apologize if things are not going as smooth as you expect it to go. What do we want to talk about today? So first I want to give you a brief introduction about who we are and what Sponge is doing. Then we will talk about compliance training in general, and um, then we would like to introduce you to an efficient solution. We will show you a case study of a company and and um, and present a little bit of a different, a new approach to compliance trainings. But before we start, we would like to ask with one questions question, and I want to publish a poll for that, which I'm doing right now. We wanted to know from you what, in your opinion, defines a successful compliance e-learning program. And um, I hope that you will be able to see something now and that you can also select answers because I'm not sure. Okay, now I'm seeing results, but I'm just not seeing it on the screen. But I can see that you're voting on different topics. Okay, that's... Okay, I'm waiting a little bit longer, but I think we can already see a trend here. I bet you all would have liked to click on several answers because in the end, all of these answers define a successful compliance e-learning program. What we want to focus today on are two aspects of this. Those are real life uh, personalized learning paths and tailored content for different risk profiles. Sorry, I need to go back. Um, but first, a little bit of an introduction uh, uh, of us. The Sponge Group is based in the UK, Belgium, and Germany. We are over 200 people working for Sponge, and Sponge is a full-service digital learning provider. Sebastian and I both work in the Berlin office. Uh, we do have a very nice rooftop terrace in Berlin, so if you ever, if you're ever in town please uh, feel free to come by. We're happy to welcome you and uh, discuss compliance e-learnings with you. Sponge offers a variety of different services. We do craft bespoke learning experiences for our clients, but we also offer a large content library on mainly on two topics. One is soft skill topics and the other one compliance content. We also have different platform and data solutions, and we offer learning consultancy services. In Berlin, we're focusing mainly on the compliance library. We have more than 25 years of experience on that topic, and um, we work with different clients. Here you can see an overview of some of our big names. We also work with smaller companies. In total, we have more than 140 clients all across the world. 
and we are basing all of our content on um, uh, learning science, which also uh, received us some industry recognition. Here you can see a few examples of recent awards that we have won. We also considered one of the core leaders in the Fosway 9 grid for digital learning. And um, we do have a large compliance library. Here you can see the topics that we cover in that library. For our compliance library, we work together with external experts, law firms that advise us on, on the content and that make sure that our content is up to date and regularly updated. For the compliance library, we have a very special format. Our format is called mix and match. It's called our mix and match concept. And it means that we have divided the big topics within that library into small learning units or learning blocks, each of them being self-contained and covering one, one aspect of that compliance topic, which means that we're able to mix and match content specific for our clients. We can customize our trainings due to your compliance needs and make sure that all of your trainings are personalized and covering the relevant risk areas that you want to address. But now I want to go into the subject and talk to you about compliance training and practice. Before we start, I would like to find out a little more about you and I would like to uh, publish a few more polls. Um, I will do so now. First of all, we would like to know how important is adaptive content to your learning experience? I don't know if you can see the poll already. Um, I'm not seeing any answers coming through. Okay, now, now I can see them. Yeah, that, so uh, that's a, a nice answer. We are very happy to see that, that it's very important. We are, uh, because this is part of um, the topic that we want to talk to you today about is that we want to present a, an adaptive format to you and show you how you can make your um, trainings more personalized and more uh, relevant for your learners. Um, what we also wanted to know from you is um, what you believe is the greatest advantage of personalized e-learning. I'm publishing the poll right now. And we will, uh, we will prove to you today that you're right with your answers. Tailored learning paths, improved engagement, and time efficiency are three of the main advantages of personalized e-learnings. How you can achieve that with your approach will be something that um, we're focusing on today. And then I want to ask one last question. Question? Oh, it's, oh, okay, it was published already. Yeah. So, sorry, I can see what... I don't know what you're seeing right now. I'm looking at the question, which compliance topics you will train on in the next two years to see if you have a two-year plan. And we can see that there's like a, a four topics that of five topics that stand out, ESG and supply chain among them, which is not surprising. Um, but it's, um, yeah, that's a very interesting topic and we will come back to that later. Um, let's start with um, our compliance wheel. What you can see here is um, six different aspects that we consider when we're establishing a learning strategy with our clients and um, defining a learning ecosystem. Those six aspects, aspects are very important. One of them obviously is the risk analysis it's important to define the risks and the needs that you have in your company and that you want to cover with your compliance training. But then how do you design content according to that risk and, uh, and make sure that your learners receive the right content is another question that is 
that needs to be addressed when you're setting up that learning strategy. What we also look at with our clients is a, uh, how that content then can be integrated into the platform. Platform is especially um, important as uh, we need to make sure, or uh, one question that we, we should ask is, can you define risk? Can you, um, can you define uh, uh, risks through your user data? So can you see in your user data on your platform which uh, learner needs specific content? For instance, can you see if someone is working in sales, if someone is working as a supervisor, and then uh, allocate the, uh, or like roll out the right content to them? Or is that something that you might not be able to see in your user data and your platform and therefore need to add um, risk profiling within your content, in your training content. But we will discuss uh, that later and show you an example of how you can do that in your course, in your program, so that you don't have to do it via your platform. Another aspect aspect that you want to address when you're like um, in uh, establishing your learning strategy is uh, the supporting communication, but then also sustainability, meaning how often do you want to roll out content? Um, how uh, do you work with refreshes? How can you make sure that your content stays relevant, stays fresh, and that your learners don't have to do the same training year after year? And the last aspect that we usually cover is success measurement, meaning how do you measure success? How do you define success? What does a successful training look like for you? And as you can see, this is a very complex um, system where different people, departments, and also different technology come together, but it's also important on, um, on the culture that you have within your organization. And uh, you need to look at all of these different aspects to define the best solution for your company and how to like create the best content for your e-learnings. We are now going to focus on the first two aspects. We want to show you how to do a right risk analysis and then according to that risk analysis, design the right content to roll it out to your learners and cover your learning needs. We have therefore um, prepared an overview of the three main standards that you, uh, it's from the Department of Justice, the Serious Fraud Office, and then the ISO 37301. And what you can see here is just like um, a comparison of how these standards address different e-learning um, requirements or training requirements. If you, um, I'm going to give you a little time to read through it. But then I want to bring your attention to the first five um, requirements because they all have uh, two things in common. You can derive two core themes from them, which means that there is a need or requirement for personalized training, meaning the training should be relevant to an employee's position and their responsibilities. And then obviously you need to do risk-based training management, meaning that training needs to be proportionate to the risk exposure of your learners. Now, you might ask how how to do that. I mean, um, you might have identified a different uh, five or, you, or let's say let's say that way. There's no way you can really roll out 10 different or five different versions of the same training just to make sure it's personalized and covers different learner needs. But we want to show you today a way how you can do so, how you can make sure that your content is personalized, that it ad addresses this, the right needs and risks, but all within one training program so that you don't have to like administer five different versions of the same training in your learning management system. And to show that to you, we have um, come, we've, we've brought a case study to you. We have um, created this uh, fictional company that is based on our average client. Um, and that can be used as an exemplar for uh, our, our normal clients. I'm sure some of you will probably uh, feel like uh, um, it will sound very uh, familiar to a lot of you. 
The case study that we're talking about today is a case study of quantum dynamics. Um, quantum dynamics. Dynamics, sorry, is a global technology company specializing in the development and production of uh, solutions for the energy sector. Um, it is it it is located in Germany, but it has various production sites all around the world, mainly in the U.S., China, Brazil, and India, and it has five thousand uh, five thousand employees. To um, these are the requirements uh, that Quantum has. They want to roll out an annual anti-bribery and corruption training for all their office employees. And they're facing the challenge that uh, the company already conducts a lot of e-learnings. So the learners are experiencing e-learning fatigue. Um, previous trainings have been received, uh, perceived as dull and boring by employees. And uh, Quantum also had the requirement that they needed to roll out the training within four weeks because of a few compliance cases that they have had and that it's all off the shelf content. And another challenge that we're facing here is that the user data in the learning management system is highly hetero hetero heterogeneous, making it impractical to do risk assessment by user data. To exemplify different risks that Quantum has within its um, um, learner base, we have come up with two personas. One is Catherine, who is an international sales team lead and has been in the company just for two months. And then the other employee is Tim, who has been in the company for over eight years and works as an IT in, in the IT help desk. So when you look at their different risk profiles, um, it's very obviously a uh, very obvious. Catherine has a completely different risk profile than Tim. She is a team lead. That means she has expanded responsibilities. She works internationally. She travels internationally. She also um, meets external customers and she uh, meets public officials. And because she is very fresh in the company, she is still in the onboarding process, but we also face the risk that we don't know what kind of training she has received in the past. Tim, on the other hand, only works internally. He does not face any external customers and he has been in the company for eight years, meaning that we know exactly what kind of training Tim has received in the past and what kind of policies we have rolled out to him. So if you now, um, if we now implement, if we were to implement one training for both of them, one size fits all approach, we would face a few risks. Catherine obviously would be uh, at risk that her training wouldn't sufficiently address her compliance needs. There might be a risk of a knowledge gap on her side. We would also face the risk that uh, case studies might be too generic for her. So she could perceive the topic as less significant for the, for the company, which would result in the worst case outcome because it could mean uh, or it would basically mean that um, uh, it, it's quite the opposite of what we want to achieve. We want to highlight uh, and train her in her role as a sales executive. And that's why we need to make sure that all the, t uh, the content that we are rolling out to her is rele relevant for her. Tim, on the other hand, would be at risk of receiving too much content, information that's not relevant for him, which would mean an unnecessarily high time investment on his side. It could also be that we roll out case studies to him that are inappropriate for his role, which could lead to frustration and demotivation on his end. And um, I have now uh, brought Sebastian so that he can uh, guide you through the solution and show you how we could implement a right solution for that covers the needs of both personas. So I'm handing over to Sebastian. Yes, thank you, Lisa. So um, what does an efficient solution look like? Um, this is the question we all like to get answered right now. And the solution is, is uh, adaptive learning. Adaptive learning means that 
the software you're working with um, uh, in, in, in the e-learning is adapting to the requirements of the user, um, which means at the one hand to the risk exposure and um, on the other hand um, to the previous knowledge this user has. And therefore we implement a two-phase um, pre-assessment before the regular e-learning content. So the first uh, pre-assessment we call risk profiling. This is um, yeah, the first questions the user has to answer when entering the training program. Um, in the case of anti-corruption, we have identified specific risk areas in the field of uh, yeah, in the field of anti-corruption for quantum dynamics. So um, we ask, is this the first training you um, are learning with in the company? Are you a team lead or a supervisor? Um, do you have direct contact to business partners and international or and do you travel internationally? And um, do you have contact to public officials, which, um, as you know, um, is quite a specifically sensitive area in, uh, in, the, in regards to um, anti-corruption. So considering these risk assessment up front, um, we implement it as follows. So we use a off-the-shelf uh, library. This is a pool of learning units or learning blocks um, that cover different compliance information and case study, studies for each subject area. And based on the risk profiling, we select the relevant lessons which are applicable to the learners. So these, these um, risk profiles, as we heard from Lisa, can be very, very different. Um, thinking of Catherine and Tim. So um, let, let us show you how it, it, it works in the following. So in our practical example related to corruption prevention, Catherine has the following profile results. She's uh, new in the company, so it's the initial training, and she's uh, an executive, so she has employees uh, she's responsible for, and she has uh, regular external interactions and also international activities. Um, the risk profiling at the beginning generates dynamically within the content of the training the suitable um, set of learning units for her. So the curriculum is assembled dynamically while she participates in the training and gets a set of lessons suiting her learning requirements. In Tim's case, um, the profile results are very different. So it's not the first training on anti-corruption he has, so, so she has, he, had, he has some, some previous knowledge on that. He has no contact at all with external parties and also no international activities. As you can see or imagine, this leads to a totally different set of lessons, which are relevant for Tim. And also in this case, um, it's not as many uh, learning units who, who are required for him. So after this risk assessment, there's the second phase of um, the pre-assessment. We call this one pre-test. This is um, for all the learners who already have participated in a training on a certain topic. So if a user selects this option um, in the beginning in the risk assessment, he will be able to participate in a pre-test. Um, and the pre-test is designed as follows. Um, for each learning unit, um, you are, um, you, or for each learning unit, which is in the curriculum for this particular user, there's a set of questions, mostly it's in our case five questions um, on this topic. And if the user is able to answer all these questions correctly on the, on the relevant topic, he's not um, needing to finalize this lesson um, in the e-learning. So this is not mandatory anymore. Um, in this uh, case, uh, Tim has answered um, 
all the questions for benefits and gratuities correctly. Um, and the other thing <laughs> he's answering, let me see, it's, it's a very small to read, corruption around the world is the other one. So that, that is, uh, that he has made some mistakes and that's why he needs to complete this lesson in the, in the training of his or in his curriculum. So, as I said, in Tim's case, a two-phase pre-assessment, first the risk assessment and then the pre-test. Um, the curriculum is set by the, the risk profiling and the pre-test enables Tim to reduce his learning time and not being um, forced to do all the lessons in his curriculum. In this case, he, he will need only to perform two lessons. So as you see, Catherine and Tim, they work on the very same e-learning content. So it's the same course of the learning management system. It's rolled out to everybody, but they both get two totally different trainings. Um, it's suiting the, the risks we assessed for both. And it recognizes the previous knowledge of both learners. Um, in this case, this leads to uh, yeah, six, six learning units for Catherine and only two for Tim, um, which is also a very, very great amount of possibilities to reduce learning time. So if you imagine like having 5,000 employees, they're all rolled out on the same course. And in average, you can save uh, 20 minutes learning time for all the employees then it's around about 100,000 minutes, which means around 1,600 hours, which is about 200 working days. So it's scaling quite a lot. Um, and as many companies have already many e-learnings in place, this is really a critical factor uh, also for, from the economical perspective. So th these three main advantages um, enable adapt adaptive learning. Thanks. Yeah, that is um, what I exactly want to give to you, but we realized there might be a lot of questions about that approach because it's a not your standard approach to compliance e-learning. So we wanted to give you time to answer these questions, which is why we have ended this a little earlier. So we have some time left for your questions. Um, I think I can, yeah, and we already have some questions coming in. I will, um, I will just go through them. Um, do you provide options to include a game, gamification for making the learning more engaging and fun? Yes. So what we do and um, what's, uh, what we have in our specific library is um, what you've seen, we have these one, over 180 different learning units. Some of them are gamified. We do have, for instance, little quizzes like game shows that you can choose and that you can then include into your training. We also have different versions of the same content. So some of them are in like a standard presentation. Some are more interactive. Some are like in a a simulation, a scenario, for instance, a branching scenario where you pick different answers and according to the answers you choose, you go down a different route or we have these games and it's up to you decide, to decide what kind of content you want to roll out to your learners and also um, you have the opportunity to swap that content yearly so that you do not have to always train the same content. You could then exchange it in the following years to make it more um, engaging and more diverse for your learners. And then the second question, does it mean you only roll out one training, but it looks differently for different users? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, you have we have different learning paths and then what you have seen and like uh, on Sebastian's last uh, slide that 
Catherine and Tim get two completely different menu pages. They have a different selection of learning blocks that they have to work through in the end to complete their training. But it's all within one SCORM package. So you're only implementing that one SCORM package in your learning management system. Uh, next question. Could your solution be integrated into a system such as Cornerstone? Yes, we can deliver this in like the standard e-learning formats, SCORM, XRP, so you could then implement it into your learning management system. And then the next question is, are the learning blocks out of the box style or are they tailored to the company purchasing the training? So um, we can do both. You can choose those learning blocks from our library. We do have, like I said, 180 learning blocks available that you can choose from. We also have all of these blocks in multiple different languages. So you can um, really cater to your global audience if you have one. But we can also customize those um, learning blocks for you. So if you have specific content that you want to address or if you require like um, some extra slides for your company, then we're happy to um, to produce them for you. Yeah, we also produce complete bespoke lessons if you like. So if you have a special policy or a special topic you want to integrate, that's also possible to take a combination of standard lessons and bespoke yes that's true we can also we can really customize this to your very specific needs and then i have one last question managing so many e-learning modules and follow the completion rates for 5000 employees should not be an easy task how does it work how do you measure a group training kpi so um this is why our solution is um, so easy, because like I said, in the end, you will get one SCORM package that you can implement and that you roll out to your entire learner audience. So you don't have to like, um, you don't have to like roll out different trainings and go through your user group in your learning management system and uh, advise uh, or like assign the trainings to them. You can roll out the same content, the same program to all of them, but then you, the learner will follow different learning paths and thereby go, down, go a different route and receive different content. So it makes it much easier to add to roll out and administer such um, for such a big audience, for such a large learner group. And you also do not have to um, uh, do the administration for like 10 different um, versions of the same training. Like in the past, you would maybe have like one, um, let's say you would have one anti-bribery and corruption training for um, team leaders and then you would have one for sales and one for procurement and then maybe for normal regular workers now you could have all in one one training but by with the adaptive approach you um, the learners still get the content that is like based on their risk and their needs and then um, I don't know if we have any more questions uh, yeah uh, for example, um, one was asked, do you use case studies for training? Um, maybe that, that was already answered. So some of the learning blocks are designed as case studies. Users are, let's say, uh, in a fictive position and they need to decide what's what's right or wrong in a, in a certain situation. And they, they are guided through uh, this scenario by the e-learning by the e training. Um, Here's one, Sebastian. Also, okay. Maybe you can answer that. Have you worked yeah. with Italian clients or are you familiar with Italian regulatory scenario and compliance training in Italian language? Um, I have not worked with an Italian client, but we have, of course, a lot of clients who have Italian language versions. So when the company is based in, in Germany or in, in the UK, but... Um, I don't know if we have something specially for for the Italian legislation. I I'm not sure, Lisa. Yeah, our content is all based on EU laws and regulations. Yeah. 
So this should fall within that, but obviously there's always a way that we can customize the content and make it specifically Italian if you require so. Uh, have you worked with French clients? Are you familiar with? Uh, no, I don't have the French, uh, but I know the scenario. Yes, we do. And we have that also that's covered in our content. And we do have a lot of French clients because, um, and some of the big, fr and, and some big French companies that we have worked with in the past and also worked on Loire sub support too. Um, any other questions that we have in modules in different languages? Yes, we do have that. What are the most effective strategies to assess the risk for compliance training customization? Um, I assume that you're uh, asking about how to um, to make that risk profiling at the beginning. So what, how we would go, uh, our approach would be that we would really, um, like we showed you in the example of um, quantum dynamics, that we would really sit down and um, see the different, look at the different roles and the different departments that you have, and then um, see what kind of specific needs and risks they have within their roles. And um, then once we have defined these risks, then we can see what kind of content we have and how we like cover the risk with, um, with our library or where we might have to develop individual content for you to cover these specific risks. But I would work with like um, those personas or like departments where really um, to sit down and see what kind of risks sit with risk sits within each department and how you can address that. And um, um, I don't know, I hope this answers the questions. Um, do we have any more new questions, Sebastian? Do you, can you see, yeah. can you tell? Is it possible to get a real demo for login? So yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Please reach out to us. Um, we are also, um, we are one, uh, is it called a stand? We have a stand here, like a digital stand um, at the conference. So please write to us and we, we are happy to send you, to all of you, we are happy to set up a demo account for you so you can take a look at our solutions and we're happy to then discuss it with you in more detail and uh, consult you and advise you on the right solution for your company. The time frame. Um, so, time frame of implementation. That is um, also a very easy question. So, if you are going with off the shelf content that we have readily available, what would you say, Sebastian? Four weeks, four to six yeah, weeks, maybe. Four to six um, weeks at a max, um, depending on what languages are required. Um, so, this is quite quickly available. Um, also, it is customized uh, in a basic way, like it's in your look and feel, it is uh, your materials and internal contacts implemented. But when the content is out of the box, then it's quite quickly assembled. As soon as you start customizing, okay, we have a project and depending on the amount of customizing and what's, what's required, if, if there's a media production behind it, then it can take a little longer. Uh, let's say three or seven, uh, three or, or six until up to six months. But th that's that's really depending on on uh, on the case. So. Yeah. So off the shelf content can be de delivered very quickly, and um, like Sebastian said, uh, what you have seen in the example of quantum dynamics, we brand it to your corporate identity. So logo colors will all be. Um, customized so that it gives the look of um, it has the look of an individual training that was made for your company but it's still off the shelf content um, yeah I think um, we have covered all the questions or um, at least I'm not seeing any new ones can a tone from can a tone from it uh, oh. from the top can be included? 
Yes, that's uh, included very often. So you, you can uh, insert a, a video or uh, an introductional text with a picture at the beginning. So that's a standard feature um, when, when we provide out of, out of the box or we say not customized, but this is, this is the basic customizing we all, always offer. And that we also recommend that you do that. Yes. Is the pricing designed to be accessible only to highly profitable companies? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Um, actually, um, the pricing for our off-the-shelf content is um, based on the number of licenses that you require. So if you're a smaller company with maybe only 200 employees, then um, obviously you're only paying for the 200 licenses, licenses that you order. So you, um, it is a very affordable solution for every company and it's not important on the size of the company. But we are very happy to like, so please reach out to us. We, will, we, will, we are very happy to set up a demo account for you and then um, show you the different options we have and also um, um, discuss a rollout plan, a training strategy with you. Um, yeah, I think that might be it for today. I'm not seeing any new questions coming in. Uh, maybe we'll wait. But um, I want to thank you all for your attention and um, and uh, I hope you will have a, a great rest of the day and a great event. Um, and yeah, then um, hopefully we can talk to you soon and reach out to us. Um, uh, you can chat with us all day and um, we're happy to to meet you. Thank you very much. Thanks also from my side. Bye.